needle. This is uh, an embroidery needle, but it's it's uh, better for doing this because it's thinner and goes down the strand. And what you're going to do is you're going to run the needle down inside the strand of the yarn as nearly as possible inside. You can kind of loosen it up a little bit. I haven't had real good luck doing this with um, oh, things like homespun because it doesn't have a strand that you can get into. But see, the, the needle is actually inside the yarn and then you pull it through This is working like a Chinese finger trap. The yarn goes inside, and when you actually pull on it, that outer layer tightens down so the inside layer can't move. Then we'll do the other end. Back it up and redo it if you want. Okay. It'll work. You can see how the. Then you go back and you trim these ends off where they come out of the main yarn. You won't hardly see that in your knitting. It'll go right through the eye of the carriage. Well, that one's going to come loose. I didn't. At this end, I didn't get into the strand. I can see Maybe how close things set. It's coming out. Okay. Okay, somewhere here I still have a hole. I'll try this one again. Of course, it's totally ruined. Okay, we'll go back through that loop again. I'm trying to get it inside the strand. At least as nearly as possible. Okay, I got it that time. See, now when I pull, this outer strand is tightening down over this little piece that's going through the middle, and it doesn't pull loose. This joint will run right through the, right through the carriage, It'll knit right into your work. You'll never find it. The only way you can find it is to feel it with your fingers. There'll be just a little slightly heavier spot where that's worked into the knitting. And that's how you do a Russian join. Okay, this time I'm going to show you how to do a Kitchener stitch or what's called grafting. Um, what you're essentially doing is you're going to add a row of knitting knitted stitches by hand. Um, your work will look like this pink stripe that goes through the green, only it's going to be the same color. And I was going to do it in the same color and show you how it disappears, and then I did a dry run and discovered you can't tell what I'm doing if I'm all using the same color. So I'm going to make another row of pink to join these two pieces here to show you how the stitch is done. Um, let's see. I personally prefer to work off a double pointed needle. I learned to do this while I was doing socks and I was always pulling the, the work off the machine onto a double pointed needle um, simply because if it was on the other kind of needle I'd invariably end up trying to pull my stitches off an end like that so I started using double pointed needles. 
If you're working with waste yarn, you can do this using waste yarn. The reason I don't like to use waste yarn is, let's say my pink stitches are my work, the green up here is my waste yarn. When you fold your waste yarn out of the way to get to your loops, bingo, you can't see what you're doing because the waste yarn's in your way. So, I learned how to do this off of the two needles so that I can see my loops, see my work underneath, and visually keep oriented to what I'm doing. I'm used to looking at the V stitch of the knit stitch from the right side, and I just watch the other stitches to make sure that what I'm doing looks like this. You can work from the back if you want to teach yourself this. But here's what you get from the back side. You're going to be forming these two rows of pink loops so that the back looks like this. And to me, that's confusing. So I just always wanted to do it from the front. It can be done the other way. Um, let's see. If you're a hand knitter, um, you may notice that the loops on my needles are on their backwards. Don't let it bother you. Just know which is the right way of the loop. When I pull things off the machine, invariably, they're always on there backwards. If you're not a hand knitter, this isn't going to bother you at all. Um, one other hint. When you put something on a needle backwards, you can either take it off, put it on right before or as you're working, or you can learn how to take it off without having to do that at the same time. So... Um, let me see, this one doesn't show. I'm going to move this one out of the way. Okay, this stitch is on here backwards. For a hand knitter, this loop should be on the front like this. And if you've picked stuff up off, off the machine onto a needle like this, gotten it backwards, you can either do what I just did every stitch, which takes some time. If you're lazy like me, you learn how to get the stitch oriented. And when you're knitting, you put your needle underneath the strand that leads to the right. doesn't make any difference how the stitch is on the needle as long as your needle goes under the strand that leads to the right. And then you'll wrap it with a yarn, take it off, and the knitting is right. It works every time. Well, I don't have any of them that are on here right to compare with. Okay, this one's on here right now. This is the strand that leads to the right. It's the one on the that's coming over the top. On that last one, it was the one that was on behind. Always go under the loop that leads to the right. Okay, that's an aside. That doesn't have anything to do with grafting, but as long as I have it here, I'll show it to you anyway. <clears throat> and that stitch was just slipped over out of the way. Okay. So let's see. I think I've told you everything I need to tell you about this. Okay, so your, your line of work is going to do, you're just going to follow this pattern that the, that the strand is making where it comes up, up through a stitch, goes into a loop above, comes out the loop next to it, and goes back in the same stitch. You're making this upside down teardrop shape. Oh, I, there's one other thing you need to, need to know. When you're joining two ends like this, as long as the two ends have the same number of stitches, it isn't going to make any difference whether you start your um, work from this, this side or this side. I usually work with an attached yarn tail, but on this sample piece, the yarn tails are in the wrong place. So, um, if the, they have the same number of stitches from each direction, it doesn't make any difference. See, like you've got four stitches. So, let me back a little bit here. Okay. Let me just back up there. I can... Okay. Okay, if you've got four number, four, the same number of stitches, like I've got four and four, having a loop at the bottom end over here first, or having a loop on the top, on the edge, it doesn't make any difference. The thing's going to look the same. However, if you've got a different number of stitches, say you've got 11 stitches, this, is, this one has 11 stitches, this one's got 12. The reason they have an, a different number is um, these are opposite ends of the same piece. And I was going to just join this in a circle for you, except I made it too short and it was too tight to do this, to um, demonstrate. So this is part of the same stuff. 
only I just pulled it apart in a second piece. And this is the opposite end, so that I've got 12 stitches here and 11 stitches here. When you turn your knitting upside down, we got 12 here, the loops at the bottom are this one. This little strand that's coming down, okay, that's these loops here at the bottom. And if you've got 12 up here at the top, you're going to have 11 down here at the bottom because your your um, stitches are fitting in between. Now, there's a big controversy. Where does the missing stitch go? Why, when you turn it upside down, there is, I can find it, here it is. Okay, if this was where I began on the machine and I was going to rehang that first row, here's the missing stitch. It comes from the row below it. And it's a little loop that always has a strand going through it. So I always, I always work with this end piece to sew with, so that little loop is never loose. But if I was knitting and was going to rehang a whole row, you'd want to pick up this little one to make the last stitch in the row. Then you'd have the same number. But okay, here we had one more thing. What I started to tell you is I have 11 stitches here because that's this end and I have 12 stitches here now if you mark evil equal numbers it doesn't matter whether you do do this or this but if you have an extra stitch it makes a big difference if you do it this way or you do it this way, you end up with an extra stitch hanging off here. And I've got some socks that I couldn't figure out for the longest time until I sat down and was trying to explain this to you yesterday, why I had two stitches on one side when I ran out of stitches on the other end. And it's because I lined my stitches up and, and had this one hanging off the end instead of fitting in between them. So count your stitches and make sure that you've got the one that has... Um, the most up here so that these fit in between them. Now then, like I said, what you're going to do is you're going to come out a stitch, go into the one on the top, come out back towards you on the one next, loop next to it, and then go back in the same hole you came out, and you'll make this upside down teardrop. So the end stitches always end up a little bit flaky looking, but I'm going to this one's 